Hi, I'm Bettina Hamlin, President and CEO of Ontario Genomics. I'm Rob Annan, President and CEO of Genome Canada. So Bettina, I'm going to start with you first and ask you to briefly, uh, and if possible in layman's terms, uh, explain what bioengineering and biomanufacturing are and how can engineering biology be seen as a platform technology? Bioengineering and biomanufacturing um, are really new ways of making products we need and use every day, but they're built on old principles. And I'd like to sort of illustrate how biomanufacturing works um, by using a couple of examples. And I'm going to use medicines and soap, because those are two things we really need during this pandemic. Um, and when we think about medicines, you know, medicines really um, come often from plants. Uh, the willow bark is pain relieving and turns out to be a great source of aspirin. Uh, the sweet wormwood is a source of artemisinin, which is the most used antimalarial drug. But it's really impractical to extract these, these drugs out of the plant. And that's when we resorted to the chemical revolution and used synthetic chemistry to make these drugs. It works, it's cheap, but it is polluting and it uses petrol, uh, the one resource we will not be able to replenish during our lifetimes. So it's not sustainable and it's not green. Fast forward to the biology revolution, where we are now really leveraging um, this recently recognized paradigm that there is DNA, um, and DNA is that molecule, which is the code of life, the molecule that really determines how our cells work and that this DNA codes for proteins and enzymes. Enzymes is what we need in our soaps to clean our uh, laundry, um, and proteins is what we need to eat, and proteins are drugs, for example, antibodies, which we use for uh, the coronavirus. So in a nutshell, um, what we're doing now is we're, we're using the world's most sophisticated manufacturing machine, biology, specifically cells, and we use these cells to make, um, as many factories, to make proteins, enzymes, uh, a whole host of materials. And the beauty of it is that these cells feed on waste um, and on biomass. They do not need uh, petroleum. And we can scale up the production of these products through a process that's called fermentation, just like we fermented grapes into alcohol or flour into sourdough. Um, so these are old processes that are that we are using in a new way. And finally, we can we can um, modify and design cells to make the products we really want and need. Uh, I know that you recently published a white paper entitled Engineering Biology, a Platform Technology to Fuel Multi-Sector Economic Recovery and Modernize Biomanufacturing in Canada. Briefly, what are the main arguments that you've put forward in that report? In that report, we made six recommendations, but I'm going to highlight three main points. The first main point is really that um, engineering biology and biomanufacturing has a huge impact on multiple sectors of Canada's uh, economy. And by supporting a platform technology, uh, a single investment serves multiple sectors. The McKinsey uh, consultant firm has put out a report uh, last year that really described um, us entering a biorevolution where up to 60% of inputs into the economy could be biological, and that would be worth two to four trillion dollars annually in a global market. And it affects all these sectors, health, food, agriculture, energy, all areas where Canada has strength. And so we should care about that. The second uh, point we're making is other jurisdictions have been investing heavily in engineering biology. Uh, the UK has created through 10 years of uh, investment, a billion dollar of private sector investment now. The US has been in the game, China, Australia, Korea, Japan, the list goes on. And recently, uh, President Biden asked Eric Lander uh, to uh, come up with the US's new science policy 
with focus on engineering biology and artificial intelligence and the jobs of the of futures. So other jurisdictions are doing it and recognizing it. And, and what we're saying in the paper is that alone doesn't mean that Canada needs to follow. But we have strength in infrastructure, in we have immense biomass that's required for biomanufacturing. We have a buzzing startup culture. We have created the strength in genomics, in science, in artificial intelligence. What we are saying is government now needs to make the appropriate follow-on investments so that we can leverage all of this um, and, and lead the world in some specific areas. And we point out that Canada's uh, opportunities are in health, in advanced therapies, in uh, protein production, food security, and in waste upcycling. The third point um, I'd like to highlight is that in order to become a leader, we have to align on a national strategy and we have to have a roadmap uh, to really set out what is it needed. If in 2040 we want to be part of that big bioeconomy, we got to work backwards and figure out what we need to do now. And uh, we think that a public-private partnership model is the right model to do that because that brings big industry, startup companies, and, and academia together. And what we're saying, bottom line also, is we need government at the table. Government is really important to help catalyze industry investment. Industry can go all over the world. There's many areas where there's lots of biomass. We need to bring um, industry here. We have set up a network that is called Can Design to facilitate that, but we want all stakeholders to be part of that, including government. Well, that's a great segue for me to turn to, to Rob. Uh, you lead uh, Genome Canada, of course, which funds genomics research across the country, but also convenes. Uh, and in a sense, because you're federally funded, I suppose uh, you are also that natural bridge between the uh, constituents that Bettina is referring to. Do you think we need a roadmap for 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 Canada? And uh, what role do you see Ontario Genomics, CanDesign, and other groups playing in its implementation? So new sectors like engineering biology uh, thrive on collaboration and cooperation between all sorts of different actors. And we're talking here about public actors, but also private actors, startup companies, established firms, investment, and so on. Um, you know, a new sector, there's lots of opportunities. There's lots of different activities. It's really important to once in a while bring people together and, and share what we see as common opportunities, common pain points, uh, and 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 collaborate on pooling efforts and resources in order to maximize impact. You know, examples of this kind of collaboration, especially between public and private sector, uh, is evident in something like, for instance, Silicon Valley, where you have, you know, uh, strong university presence through something like Stanford, uh, matched with a lot of startup companies with lots of new ideas, you have financing, and you have established companies. And together, you end up with a really important mix of factors. You know, from the university side, you get new ideas coming out of research labs, you get a lot of talent coming out of students and training, and it's important that universities understand the, the, the opportunities in the community in order to be able to help shape that research, shape that training. You also end up, um, you know, with obviously startup companies and spin-outs from those universities, but they need to be linked into some of the bigger and more established players. So we're really at a similar point, I would say, here in, in Canada, where we have a lot of really uh, important activity happening. We've got some great startups in this space. We certainly have established players uh, in different sectors, health, agriculture, natural resources, who are very active and interested in the space. And of course, we have uh, you know some of the world's best researchers uh, working on engineering biology specifically, but also in a lot of the other kind of accessory areas like genomics, like AI, and so on. So I think you know there's a common sense that what we really need to do now is figure out collectively where are the real opportunities here? How can we marshal the resources and the energies required in order to make serious advances? And so something like hand design is a perfect example of how you bring people to the table to have those conversations, identify areas where investment may be needed from Ontario Genomics, Genome Canada, and others, but then letting all the individuals go off and, and do what they do best, which is you know run small companies, perform research in labs, knowing that they're on a roadmap that's going to actually lead them to, uh, to, to helping build the sector. Rob, again, leveraging your sort of uh, macro uh, perspective, um, could you take maybe uh, at least one example of collaboration between 
Canadian genomics, uh, biosciences, and maybe some of the other sectors that you mentioned earlier um, that enable Canada to, to, to lead in, uh, in these kind of fields? Where we're seeing real innovation, a transformative innovation today, is in the convergence of different technologies. And so, you know, genomics is still a reasonably new science, uh, but when it's combined with areas like AI, uh, you know, emerging areas around synthetic biology, uh, manufacturing, uh, you know, nanotechnologies is where you're starting to really see exciting innovation happen. And so when we think, for instance, in agriculture, right, agriculture, um, it, you know, is no longer the, the individual farmer out in the field testing the soil with their thumb and, and you know, uh, kind of making judgments based on the farmer's almanac. Today, it is, you know, agriculture is the confluence of a huge number of technologies. We fund a variety of projects in agriculture that are using genomics, certainly, to understand, uh, you know, uh, strains better, to be able to build in, um, you know, strains that are going to help with climate change, whether it's drought resistance or, or heat tolerance. But that technology, when combined with, say, soil microbiology and the ability to really understand the, uh, the you know, the, the composition of the soil in which those plants are going to be growing, combined with sensor technology, right, combined with um, other smart systems, you get the convergence of all of these kinds of technologies together is where you start to see real innovation. And so I think, you know, the same is what we're seeing now in engineering biology, the bringing together certainly of genomics and our understanding of the genetic code, but bringing together also your, you know, chemistry and chemical synthesis, bringing together other biological systems, as well as, you know, manufacturing and, um, you know, sort of uh, miniaturization. All of these pieces are coming together and converging to open up new areas that wouldn't have been possible. And then when you combine that with, uh, you know, Canada's strength in uh, skills and training, highly educated workforce, strong universities and colleges, producing really talented people, uh, we have a, what I think is almost a perfect mix for being able to take advantage of this, this opportunity. What steps must be taken, and very importantly, by who, uh, to establish these kind of cross-country collaborations and interdisciplinary knowledge transfer you know, we started with the white paper. We want to really flesh out the roadmap. We want to identify some projects where, you know, groups of, uh, of people can come together and say like, okay, we want to work on waste upcycling, or we want to work together on training because quite frankly, you know, this blurring of disciplines, like where do you get that degree, right? Where do you learn this? So this whole area of reskilling and upskilling workforce, but skilling our 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 you know upcoming talent, um, is 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 really important. And so you know enabling these 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 conversations across um, is really what needs to happen, and that's what Can Design is 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 made for. And you know we also need to connect you know not only nationally but internationally because a lot of jurisdictions are, you know, very much into this. Uh, the U.S. has just invested actually out of an engineering biology research council, uh, invested in a biomanufacturing design uh, piece, uh, $87 million out of DARPA. They're going to build modules of biomanufacturing. We're talking to them about collaboration. So this is, you know, the world is, we want the world to be the market for Canada, right? We want to upcycle value-added products that we can sell to the world so that we don't have to buy it from them. And that requires collaboration internationally and Can Design has established us as, that as well. One thing that is underappreciated, right, is the need to create uh, a, a forum to come together and share information, share challenges, identify opportunities, and frankly, to build trust. That um, we think a lot about hard infrastructure and investments in, you know, factories and buildings and systems and so on. Uh, we think about action. Let's get moving. Let's, you know, get, get something done. Uh, and we think about uh, funding. Uh, and all of these things are important. But what's really important, too, is to create an environment where like-minded individuals who are contributing to a common purpose have the opportunity to come regularly 
um, work on, you know, hey, this is what we're facing. What are you facing? You know, my experience, you know, sitting where I do, you know, Genome Canada, we work with academics across the country. We work with research hospitals and we work with industry. And, you know, industry is more than happy to come to the table and be very open about the challenges they're facing, especially if they believe that table is a place where they might be able to identify potential solutions down the road. So I think, you know, it's easy to underappreciate what we might call the soft infrastructure of uh, uh, that, that supports sectors. And so things like can design, for instance, I think are absolutely crucial to be creating a table where you can invite people. And it's not a top down. No one at can design is saying this is what you all now have to go and do. It's instead a very bottom up and organic way for the community to be able to say, here's what we're getting, here's what we're seeing, where there's an opportunity, and hey, maybe we should work on that together. We see that in the COVID space, you know, um, where there is, uh, by bringing people together, you're actually smoothing the system out and finding ways to, you know, share information, technology transfer, uh, best practices, and so on. So I think, you know, a, a form like this is absolutely crucial. And then from there, you get an opportunity to say, okay, here's the actions we need to be taking, right? Let's bring a few people together on this project or that project or come back to us when you finished on that and let us know how that went and then you say and now we need the funding to make that happen so to me i think you know it's absolutely crucial to have that that kind of form for idea generation and sharing that then follows on to the kinds of investments that are going to make an impact and, and have a difference bettina do you have anything to add to uh, to that you know the bio revolution is happening now it's products are being made products are on the market other in uh, you know jurisdictions are investing. We cannot miss out on that. If we miss out on this now, we'll be buying products from others, and um, we we are here. We have created and mobilized a community to help uh, Canada to help our industries grow into this uh, bio revolution. And if we work together with uh, with a long term view on this, uh, we can have the ideas and the solutions that Canadians need. So the time is now. Um, and the opportunities are there for us to take.